Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, if you've been part of the retro gaming community for a while, you may have noticed a glut of low-end and cheaply made clone systems coming out what seems like every six months. Typically, I just ignore these because often they're cheaply made, they don't emulate very well, and the controllers are crap. Now, that's not to say all of them are like that, but in general, a lot of these companies seem to be like racing towards the bottom, trying to create the cheapest version possible, and that's not what I'm interested in. Thankfully, there's a company here in Seattle, Washington that has the opposite goal. Their mission is to create the best and most accurate clone system on the market. So for this video, I'm gonna review their brand new Super Nintendo clone system called the Super NT, and I think you guys are gonna be very impressed. Let's take a look. To start off with here, I wanna mention that Analog did send me two of their units for review. Now they actually have four different models that you can choose from, and I chose to check out the flat black one and also the crystal one. I got those simply because I thought they looked the coolest and they don't disappoint, they look pretty awesome. So what makes the Super NT different than most of the other clone systems that are on the market? Well, the big thing is this is using FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Arrays, to recreate 100% of the original hardware. There's no emulation going on here. There's no retro pie in a box going on here. It's 100% recreation of that hardware. The advantages to putting all that work into making FPGA work is this. This will run every Super Nintendo and Super Famicom cartridge flawlessly. The other advantage to FPGA is that it is very fast. There is basically zero lag and total accuracy. Also, because you're recreating the hardware, that's when you can modernize certain parts of it. So for instance, instead of just doing analog out, like so many of these other systems, they actually are tailoring it to doing 1080p through HDMI. So the visuals are amazing. And because they have complete control over the entire process, they can keep the aspect ratio like it was meant to be. Now you can stretch it if you want, but people like me, I want the natural four by three aspect ratio. And you also have multiple video resolutions if you want them, scan lines and a bunch of other stuff that we're gonna get into later. Audio is another area that Analog has really paid attention to and actually has made even better than the original Super Nintendo. Because if you think about it, the original Super Nintendo would process the audio digitally, but then ultimately would have to convert it to analog to get out to your old CRT. But with this system, you're getting the pure digital audio and video signal, and it looks and sounds better than ever. Of course, one of the most important parts of any gaming system is the controller. And thankfully, they have teamed up with an awesome third party that is 8-Bit Do. They make one of the best third party Super Nintendo controllers out there. This is the SN30, and it also matches the actual system, which I thought was a really nice touch. So these are wireless controllers and they get about 20 hours of battery life and they're virtually lag free. But if you don't like those controllers and you prefer the originals, well, you can always use your real Super Nintendo controllers plugged right into the front. Let's go ahead and power it on and get into the settings menu. And then you're gonna notice something kind of curious. Every console comes with two full games pre-installed. I guess they must be big fans of Super Turrican because included here is the director's cut of the first game. Now the history is that the original version was a little bit too large to fit on the cartridge. It actually had to be cut down by a third. Well now it's restored for the first time ever and included on every single console. And as an extra bonus, they threw in Super Turrican 2. They're clearly fans of these awesome run and gun shooters. Now let's get back to the settings, but I'm not gonna show you everything in here because most people will never have to touch this stuff. I mean, right out of the box, it works and looks great. But if you want to, you can get in there and tweak a bunch of stuff. Just know that through HDMI, it supports 1080p, 720p, 
480p. There's also support for NTSC as well as PAL. You can also add scan lines. There are scalar options. You can mess around with the horizontal position. You can stretch it. You can mess around with the vertical position. There's a lot going on here if you wanna dig in and really tailor it to exactly how you want it to look on your TV. But enough of that, it's a gaming console. Let's play some games. So for this, I picked out a random selection of stuff that might be kind of fun to try. A little bit of everything, both North American releases and also Super Famicom games. The first game I want to try is called Axel Now this is a shooter unlike any other I've played on the system. What makes it kind of unique is that it uses the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 for some really cool parallax scrolling effects. In addition to this game being just a really fun shooter, it also has a great soundtrack. Stunt Race FX is often used to test clone systems because some of them can't run it. Obviously this is a 3D racing game on the Super Nintendo, which is kind of unusual. And that's because it's using the Super FX graphics chip. Now I know what you're thinking. If you're not familiar with this game, you're like, man, this runs like crap. Well, that's because on the original Super Nintendo, it ran like crap. This is way ahead of its time, but a good test to make sure that this will work with pretty much everything. Ah uh, yeah, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island is such a great game. I absolutely love the hand-drawn graphics in this. Now this game can sometimes give emulators and clones a bit of a problem because some of the special effects were powered by a Super FX2 chip and the analog Super NT runs it fine. I also popped in my copy of Super Castlevania 4. Now this is another game that uses the Super Nintendo's Mode 7. Looks fantastic. This is such a great game as well. Has great audio and a really killer soundtrack. I put in my copy of Top Gear 3000 because this is the only game that officially uses a DSP-2 chip now, I don't know exactly where in the game it uses this. I'm not sure what to look for, but the game ran fine for me, so I think we're good. And of course, everybody loves Contra 3 The Alien Wars. This is an awesome run and gun shooter. I'm not great at the game, but I always have a blast playing it. <laughs> blast, get it, yeah. Of course, I had to test some Super Famicom games and Go Go Ackman is a really fun platforming game. I guess it's based on a Japanese manga. I have no idea, but it, it's very colorful, controls extremely well, and it's super fun. So if you haven't played this game, definitely check it out. Here is one of the highlights of my entire Super Famicom collection. This is called Sprig Empowered. Actually, my buddy Drunken Master Paul bought me this when he was over in Europe, and I'm so grateful because this game is fairly expensive now, but man, it is such a fun shooter. This is a great game. Obviously, you can tell it has amazing graphics, so love this game. I also wanted to make sure that my SD2 SNES cartridge worked, and it does. This is a special cartridge that allows you to put ROMs on it as well as play homebrews and hacks. And as you can see here, it's working perfectly. So are there any downsides? Well, the price could be an issue for some people. This thing costs $190, and that does not include the controller. Now, if the Super Nintendo is your favorite system or you just want one of the best ones ever made, then $190 I think is reasonable. But it's definitely going to be a problem for some people that's, you know, that's on the high end. Also, some people have been very disappointed that the clear version isn't exactly clear. As you can see in, in, in the previous footage, you've seen that this thing is more cloudy, more crystal looking than true clear. So some people have pre-ordered this based on the, the artist's renderings and now they're kind of disappointed. I can see that, me personally, I actually don't mind a little bit of clouding here. 
I, I think it still looks pretty cool, especially whenever you have the lights on, it looks awesome. But I can understand if people are a little bit disappointed. Love to know if you are interested in the Analog Super NT as well. Did you have one on, on pre-order? Which one did you get? Love to know down in the comments below. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care. Okay, why have we not seen the same thing for the Sega Genesis? I mean, I get it, everyone loves Nintendo, that's great, but we need a high quality FPGA powered Sega Genesis. I think that would be absolutely amazing. Honestly, I'm surprised that nobody has yet. And if they have, please let me know down in the comments below because I didn't, I'm not familiar with it, I didn't know that. So, all right guys, thank you so very much for watching. Have a great day.